We are going to be learning how to graph linear inequalities in two variables, uh, but there are some foundational skills that we need to review or go over before we learn how to graph linear inequalities, and those foundational skills will be covered in this particular lesson. Uh, in this lesson, what we are going to do is first of all review how to graph coordinates and also how to graph lines. So that's the focus of this lesson. How do we graph coordinates and how do we graph lines? And I'm going to give you one particular method to graph lines, uh, which you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, so first First of all, points are placed on a coordinate plane with the coordinates x, y, so x always comes before y, where x represents where the point lines up with the x-axis and y represents where the point lines up with the y-axis. So what we're going to do here is just state the coordinates of all of the points that are on this graph below. So point A lines up with the x-axis. The number here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, because this is 0 here, and it lines up with the y-axis at 1, 2. So that coordinate would be the coordinate 4, 2. Uh, point B lines up with the x-axis at negative 2 and lines up with the y-axis at positive 4. So that coordinate would be negative 2 <clears throat> and positive 4. Uh, point C, and then I'll stop doing this shortly, lines up with the x-axis at negative 4 and with the y-axis, since it's below 0, at negative 2. So that point would be negative 4, negative 2. And point D lines up with the x-axis at positive 2, and the y-axis at negative 4. So that would be positive 2 and negative 4. Now if we look at point E, it's right on the y-axis. So it actually lines up with the x-axis at 0, and it's on the y-axis at the point. 6. So that would be the point 0 and 6. And here's the remaining points for you. Uh, F is on the x-axis at negative 6 and lines up with the y-axis at 0. Uh, point G lines up with the x-axis at 0 and is on the y-axis at negative 6. And finally, point H is on the x-axis at 6 and lines up with the y-axis at 0. So that's how to graph coordinates. In the next point of the lesson, what we're going to do is graph linear functions. And this is based on the idea that in order to graph lines, all we need is two coordinates. So we're not going to look at the slope-intercept form, which you may be familiar with, or standard form. We are just going to determine any two coordinates. And here's the easiest way to do that. Uh, first of all, to determine the y-intercept, so where the function crosses the y-axis, you would substitute x equals 0 into the function and solve for y, because at any y-intercept, they all have something in common. Let me show you an example. Uh, all of these would be considered y-intercepts, all these points. And what you'll notice is they all share something in common. They all have an x-coordinate of 0. So any time that you'd like to know the y-coordinate, y-intercept, you would substitute x equals 0 into the function. So that would determine where your y-intercept is. And the second step here is to determine the x-intercept, you would substitute y equals 0 into the function and solve for x, because x-intercepts, which is where the line crosses the x-axis, all have one thing in common. They have an x-coordinate, and then the y-coordinate is always 0. So any point here would, would be something and 0 as its coordinates. Okay, So <clears throat> that's the easiest way to find two points. However, what it says on this bullet, if the x-intercept and y-intercept are the same point, in some cases uh, the x-intercept and y-intercept are both the point 0, 0, which is the origin, where the x and y axis meet, uh, what we do is substitute a different value for x to get a different value for y. And you get to choose what that uh, substitution point for x is, and you'd graph that point. And then finally, once you have two points, you sketch a line through the points. Okay, so let's see what that is in practice. Again, the idea is we need two points, and the easiest two points generally to find on a line are the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Uh, so we're going to be reviewing how to do that and also be doing some algebra along the way. So for this first question, uh, what I would like to do is to find out the y-intercept. I'm going to substitute x equals 0 into the function. So I'd have y is equal to negative 0 plus 3, or in other words, y is equal to 3. That's your y-intercept, and that is right here. 
That's where the line crosses the y-axis. To find out the x-intercept, I would substitute y equals 0 into the function. So the first step is to substitute. And this is a little bit more difficult. We're going to have to actually algebraically solve for x. So we eventually want x equals something. Uh, to do that, we just do some algebra. So the opposite of adding 3 is subtracting 3. So we have negative 3 equals negative x. And if negative 3 equals negative x, we could divide by the coefficient negative 1 to get that positive 3 is equal to x. And that is your x-intercept at positive 3. So once you have any two points, you don't need any more than that. As soon as you have two points, you have the definition of a line. So there's the line y is equal to negative x plus 3. Uh, in the next one, so we're just going to practice the same thing over and over again. If you ever want to try it yourself, you go right ahead. Uh, I'm going to substitute x equals 0. So I'd have 2, and instead of x, it's times 0, minus y equals 5. So we have 0 minus y equals 5, which means minus y equals 5, because 0 is 0. Uh, so the next thing is, if negative y equals 5, then we could divide by the coefficient negative 1 to get what positive y is. So positive y equals negative 5. So that would be your y-intercept. Uh, for your x-intercept, I would substitute y equals 0 into the function. So I'd have 2x minus 0 equals 5. And that means that 2x equals 5. To solve for x, I would divide by the coefficient 2, and I have x equals 5 over 2. And the easiest thing in this course to do is just to make that a decimal. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So that's roughly where your, or I should say that's precisely where your x-intercept is. So that line would look something like this. Uh, here's the last one, which is going to be the trickiest one because you will find out in just a second. Uh, so the y-intercept, substitute x equals 0. So we have 3 times 0 plus 4y equals 0, which means 0 plus 4y equals 0, which means 4y equals 0. <clears throat> and if we divide by the coefficient 4, 0 divided by 4 is 0. We have a y-intercept of 0, which is right here. Uh, what you'll also find is we also have an x-intercept. Of zero. So let me show you that, show that to you quickly. So 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 0. So if 3x equals 0, and if we divide by the coefficient 3, 0 divided by 3 is also 0. So in this case, the x and y intercept are the exact same point, which means, unfortunately, we have to determine any two points or any two coordinates. We only have one coordinate in this case. So let's go ahead and find out another coordinate. So it says with this bullet, if the x-intercept and y-intercept are the same point, as is this case, substitute a different value for x to get a different value for y. So we're not going to find the x or y-intercepts. We're going to find a unique point. So what I'm going to do in this case is I am just going to choose x equals 1. Okay, so x equals 1. What that means is my coordinate at the very end is going to have an x value of 1, and we want to find out what y is. So 3 times 1 plus 4y equals 0. So you have 3 plus 4y equals 0. The opposite of adding 3 is subtracting 3. So we have 4y equals negative 3. And if we divide by 4, the coefficient, we have y is equal to negative 3 quarters, which is negative 0 0.75. So the y-coordinate, so here is an actual coordinate. It is not an intercept. It is a different, we already have the two intercepts, which are the same point. It's a different coordinate. So when x is 1, y is negative 0 0.75. So that is roughly right here. Okay, so now you've got a separate unique point in this case, and that defines the line right here. Okay, uh, so that's how we can find two unique points. And if we don't have the x and y intercept being separate points, you have to choose some other point for x to solve for y, and that will give you a unique other coordinate or second point. Uh, so that is it for this lesson.